Hello everyone. Welcome to Learn with Techies. In this video, we will learn about looping instruction in Java. The content of this video will be as follows. The introduction to the loop where we will talk about what and why of the loop, why is it needed and so on. The while loop, for loop, do while loop, break and continue and then we will end with a summary. Start with introduction to the loop. So suppose you want to write a code to say hello to five of your classmates. So how you will write it? You will go into the Visual Studio code and probably type it five times. That's what we have learned as of now. So this is how you will write it. Basically you will type five times. Hello friend one, hello friend two, hello friend three, hello friend four and hello friend five. Like this you will write it, uh, type it five times. Now suppose you have to write the same for your thousand friends. Like for your thousand friends you want to say hi. So you will not be writing this whole code manually thousand times, right? So for in these conditions, we use loop. So basically what we need, we need a way to execute this one statement thousand times or five times. So that's why we need loop. Loop is repetition of a part of program either specified number of times or until some condition is satisfied. So in the program, instead of writing it five times, we want to write it once but tell the computer to run the same line five times. There are three methods by which we can loop in Java. While loop, for loop and do while loop. Let's start with the while loop. So this is the format of while loop. We have a while keyword. After that we have a condition and then whatever statement we want to execute like if this condition is true then whatever ex uh, statement we want to execute that is written within this curly braces. This condition kind of give, give a true or false value. If this condition is true it will go into, into this uh, loop execute this statement and this statement and then it will ag again go back and check again. Okay, is this condition again true? And then it will go back and again execute. Once this condition that we are checking, this turns out to be false, then it comes out of the loop and go whatever instruction we have written next, it will run that. So here if you see, we have written one more line, change condition. So basically, suppose this condition first time returns true, uh, returns true and then if you don't change the condition, then it will again keeps on returning true and this loop will keep on executing. Like each time you, this condition checks, it's, turn, uh, it's returned true, this condition, then it will execute this, then again go back. And if you are not changing this condition, then it will keep on running till inf uh, for infinity. So for that cases, we have this line where we change the condition also. Like first time we execute it, then we change the condition somehow, like something like we can add, subtract or do anything. And then we go back and again che check the conditions. Let's talk about the same program that we did earlier where, where we were saying hello to five of our friends. Now how we will do the same program using while loop. So first what we, what we will do, we will initialize a new statement. Like we'll say okay int i equals to 1. And then what we will do, we will create a while. And in the while parenthesis, we will add the condition. That is condition on based of which if, it, if this condition is true, we will go into this block. If it's not true, we will come out and execute whatever we have written next. After this file, we have these curly braces. So this is called opening curly braces and this is called closing curly braces. So basically what it signifies, it signifies just the end of the scope. So basically, each time when we use either while or if else or anything, after which you have to execute a array of instruction, like not one line, multiple line instruction that you have to execute. So you put it inside this curly brace. So what this tells the compiler, okay, whatever after this opening curly braces, whatever we have is part of this while loop. And once you close this braces, means like after you close this braces, whatever we are writing next statements, that is not part of this while loop. That that is independent of this while loop. Whether it's here or it's not there, it does not concern it because this is out of scope for that. So each time you write a while, for, if, else, anything, you will start this with a opening bracket if it's a multi-line statement. And you will end where you want to end the program, you will end it with this uh, curly braces. If you will not end it, it will either the compiler will gil, give error or all of the statements that you have written here afterwards that will also start executing as part of this while loop only. So coming back to the program, so we have written the while, we have added a condition like we want this line to execute both of this to be executed so until i is less than 6. Okay, this is the condition that we write and then we go out and then we print. Okay, system.out.println hello friend 1. Once we print it first time, we will go back and change the condition. Like what we are saying, okay, now i equals to i plus 1. So that now i equals to 2. 
so this is what we do for changing the condition each time we will increment the count uh, increment this i to plus one so that once it goes into condition it will again check okay is two less than five yes then it will again execute it so let's see how it looks actually so this is how suppose this is the i value and this is what we are getting printed right so first time i equals to one it will print hello i'll just write shortcut friend one after that what happens it goes in here i equals to now is two right so after it execute this line this curly brace means that this while loop has ended so it will again go back here and again check okay is two less than five less than equal to five yes it's true then again it will go in here it will print now i is two and it will print hello friend two again let me clear this up again after two it will go back again printed hello friends two after that it will again do okay two equals to two plus one so now i equals to three right i is now equals to three it will again go back in the loop check okay is three less than equal to five yes it is it will again go inside it will print the same line what we have here but with hello friend three once it do does that it will again go here i equals to i plus one so now i was three three plus one equals to four so i is now four it will again go back in this here check okay is four less than equal to five yes it is less than five then it will again go in here it will print hello friends four again it will come in here again it will check okay four plus one equals to five so i is now five right so it will again check okay is five less than equal to five yes it is less than equal to five it will go inside this loop it will run hello friend five after that again it will do five equals to five plus one equals to six now i is equal to six now it will go in here it will check okay is six less than equal to five which is false so it's false so it will not go here and it will come out of this curly braces whatever we have executed here whatever statement would we would have written here it will execute that because this condition is now false like six is not less than equal to five so it will not go in here and it will come out of this loop so this is how it looks so now let's try this example in our visual studio code so this is how it was looking initially so what we will do first we will remove all of the statement we don't need all of this and then first i'll add a counter in tie equals to zero after that i'll what i'll do i'll add a condition i'll while i is less than equal to five and then i'll put a curly braces inside this curly braces i'll write whatever i want to execute multiple times so basically since this was the only statement i want to execute multiple times I'll write only this one inside it, and then I'll just end this with system dot out dot println finished. So this is how it's looking. I'll also need to add something like increasing the changing the condition, right? Or else, if I did not add that, I will always remain zero only. Sorry. If I don't add this condition, I will also re always remain as one only. So this loop will keep on running. It will never come out of that loop. We also need to remove this one and add i. So let's go ahead and run this program. So if you see, it's run. It ran, ran. Whatever we had inside this hello friend. So it runs this statement with new statement. Hello friend one. Hello friend two. Hello friend three, four, and five. Each time it's incrementing i, and if you see this finish statement was only executed once. When it was executed once, we have five, and we do five plus one here. If we we do five plus one equals to six, so now once i is equal to six, now i equals to six. So after this point, it again check okay is six less than equal to five? It's no. Then only it comes out of the loop whatever we had written here, and then it execute whatever we have. At last, like whatever we have written out of this curly braces, that is out of this loop, then this statement is executed. That's why this finish statement is executed at last. So, so what will happen if I don't have this changing condition? Let's see what how it will run then. If I remove this and then I run it, it will like it's it will keep on going till infinity. 
hello friend 111 and if you see this one is also not changing because we are not changing the condition so this line keeps on executing and this is called infinity loop because it's keep on running till the infinity talk about this conditions this condition that we have added here it could be it should always return a boolean value that is true or false that means it could either be the relational operator like how we have used greater than equal to it can also be a real can also be a logical operator like you can write something like this also ampersand ampersand it's a logical operator i have covered logical operator in my past video so please have a look if you don't know what that is if you see i added a logical operator and i added more conditions so here you can add as many logical operators you want or as many relational operator you want the whole thing is like combination of that whatever you write in this condition should give a true or false value only if i execute this this will also give the same thing because one is greater than zero and all of the numbers since we have given the in, in initial counter only equals to one so every number will be greater than zero and this loop is getting satisfied so it goes in here this curly braces is needed only if you have if you are executing multi-line statement in here so like suppose if you only had something like this here only one right line then you could have removed this curly braces and compiler will automatically assume okay this is the while loop and this is the first statement after the while loop that means it's part of this while loop so even if you don't write the curly braces for single line statement it will work let me print i value so that it's more easier for you to if i run this see i is changed to six because this all is automatically running but if you see this line this tenth line that we have this is not executing getting executed five times because since it's not part of while loop now let's talk about for loop for loop is most popular looping instruction in java and this is the format of for loop so this is the format of for loop this is the keyword for that from where we start the program then we have a parenthesis in this parenthesis there are three statement that are separated by semicolons and then we have a curly braces within which we write whatever we want to execute if this for loop is successful so let's first understand what is this what this line signifies so if you see there are three statements here first is initialize counter second is test counter and third is increment counter so what do we mean by initialize counter so if you remember in while loop also we initialized one vari variable i equals to zero to signify okay this is from where we are starting the count so in for loop you can do it here only so you will do something like this this is what initializes initialization means basically you are initializing the counter a value that is i equals to zero now the second after that you will add a semicolon after that you will write okay test counter so this is the actual condition like if this condition is true it will go into this loop if this condition is false it will go out of the loop so like we did in uh, our while loop also here we will add something like i is less than equal to whatever we want it could be a logical or a relational operator but the result from this should be true or false then we will again put a semicolon and then there is an increment counter so here is how we are changing the condition so whether you want to add like i equals to i plus 1 or i minus 1 like how we want this condition to change that is part of this so after that there is a curly braces like that signifies okay the code after that is linked with this for loop so we will have executing statements then we close the braces and this for loop is also kind of similar to while loop where in while loop we have three separate line statement here for loop is kind of combining all of those into a single statement let's try this with the same example like how we did in while so this was how our while loop used to look so let's see if we can com convert this one into a for so if you see this was a while loop in interest of time i have already written a for loop let's go through it so if you see this was the first line where we were kind of initializing i so that part we have added it here we are initializing it as the first part of the for loop second one was in the for loop the test encounter basically so what we had here this condition the same thing we have copied it here because this is what this expression is what the like what is exactly doing the testing so this we added it here and then we have the third condition where we were changing the condition so whatever we have written here we have added it here and then whatever we had it here with the main print statement we just added it here also let's try to understand this for loop we will have i and then we have what we want to print here so first i equals to one how we know that because we are initializing it here so this is the first thing that occurs after that it checks this okay is one less than equal to five 
so that's the second step that happens so that is true then it goes in here like this is the third step that is getting executed we will go here and execute okay hello friend one so this is the third that's getting executed once it's executed and if you have multiple lines here like if you had something else also those also will get printed and it will be it will run to end of this loop once it reaches this closing braces it will go back to this statement i equals to i plus one so at this point once this whole block is executed after that i is incremented so this is the fourth number so now i equals to two so as soon as i equals to two then the code has been executed one time right so now it will not go back to this one like this was this initialization was only done first time so it will just go directly to this step number two it will combine okay is two less than equal to five which is true then it will again print this line which is because this is the third one it will again go here hello friend two and then it will go back to this fourth line so now uh, from this point onwards like after the second execution assume this statement is not even there because this will not this will be only be executed first time once we execute this line again hello friend 2 is executed then we'll go back into this increment counter we'll do okay i equals to 2 plus 1 3 so now i is 3 again it will go into condition this it will be check, checking it here 3 is less than equal to 5 yes then it will again execute okay hello friends 3 once this is done it will it will again go in this line number 4 i equals to 3 plus 1 4 it will print okay i is now equals to 4 it will again check okay is 4 is less than equal to 5 yes it is then it will execute again this print line it will print hello print 4 after that it will again go here 4 equals to 4 plus 1 5 this statement so now i will be equal to 5 is 5 less than equal to 5 yes it's true then it will again print here hello print 5 after that it will again go to this i equals to i plus 1 so now i is equal to 6 after that once it goes into this statement is 6 less than equal to 5 it will say false then it will come out of this loop it will not execute this statement so this is where the program will end as soon as i turns to 6 now let's try this into our visual studio code so i have written the program that we were practicing earlier in our board and it's almost same to what we have practiced there there is only one difference in here so here if you see I have started the counter from 5 and taken it to 1 and then instead of plus 1 I am doing the minus 1. So I did it like that just to show you like you can use here whatever operator you want. It could be plus, minus, into division whatever you want and it will behave the same way. So right now what we are doing, we are doing it in opposite way. Like now first we are initializing i with 5. So first time i is 5 okay and then it will be say hello friend 5 and then it will go back and then it will be decremented this time like i will now change to 4 so then it will be like is 4 greater than or equal to 1 yes and so onward it will keep on going it un unless it turns to 0 and there we will be like okay is 0 greater than or equal to 1 it's false then it will come out so let's run this up so if you see this time we did it opposite hello friend 5 hello friend 4 hello friend 3 2 1 and so onward so this is the opposite way of doing it. Here we are decrementing instead of incrementing. And at last the finish statement is there. So now there is one more version of this. Instead of writing it like this, we can also write it something like using unior, unary operator, like something like this. Why this will work? Because in unary we know the expression is first used and then its value is decremented, like after that expression. So what will happen here? First time you go in here, you are doing, okay, i equals to 5. And you run okay hello friend i equals to 5 and then you do the decrement so now i equals to this whole expression will give still give 5 but i value has already decremented to 4 right so here it will like okay oh, is 4 less than equal to 1 and then we can okay go back okay hello friend 4 so here if you see even if you write up prefix operator it will still give the same answer because this whole ex expression is executed after this one the interesting part of this for loop is like even when you remove any part of this semicolon expression it will still work like suppose this is the first part i removed it and i put it here this expression will still work it will assume that okay i equals to 5 it has already taken it from there and it, this part of this expression will only be executed so if i run it like this let me clear this up it will still give me the same answer same goes for if i want to remove this 
in changing condition part from here instead of adding it here i do it something like here and then execute it it will still give you the same answer because what it will assume okay this it will only check this expression then and you can remove this expression also there is nothing and this there is no condition to come out of this block and this block will keep on executing if you see it's saying unreachable code because this loop will never ends because now it's an infinity loop since it does not have a condition how to come out of that loop there is a way to do that using break and continue which we will cover later in this video only now let's talk about third type of looping instruction do while loop so if you will see the format here it's kind of same as the while loop only only the ordering is changed and we have a new keyword here do so let's see how it works so this is the do while loop format so if you say it see it's kind of similar to what we have in the while loop in the same way we have this keyword while but here instead of adding the condition at the top this condition is being added here so let's start from the beginning so first we have a do keyword after that we have a opening curly brace in which we will put all of the statements that we want to execute multiple times and then we will close the braces after that we will add a while loop and then in the parenthesis we will put a condition so here it's ki kind of similar to what we have in the earlier version of while loops like earlier in the format of while loop only the condition instead of having at the top is at the bottom one interesting thing about this do while loop is like if you see the first statement is do and after that we have the execute statement and the condition is at the last the what that means is like this condition is executed after this statement is executed so what this means is like this statement will be executed at least once because the first time when we start this do while we are not even checking the conditions we check the condition after this line has executed and it comes out and then it when it checks in here so in do while that's the speciality of do while in do while the statement will be executed whatever we have in the block at least one before the condition turns false so let's see this with the same example that we did earlier of saying hello to five of our friends so this this is how the program will look using the do while this is the first statement where we are doing the initialization after that we use this keyword do and we we will print it first time then we will increment the condition then we will add a while loop and we will check the condition okay is i less than equal to 5 if it's true then it will go back again to this do loop so it will continue to work so let's see how it will look when we use when we actually print it this will be the value of i and this will be our print statement what's it getting printed basically so first time i equals to 1 we initialized it here so i equals to 1 and then it goes into this loop it will execute second time this Two, so it will go here and say hello friends one then after that it will increment this i equals to i plus one so now i equals to two after that it will go here in the while loop and it will check the condition is fold is two less than equal to five yes it is less than equal to five then again it will go back this four will go back to this two so it will again print this line hello friend two then again it will go from there to third line like from here it will go here 2 equals to 2 plus 1 now i will be equal to 3 and then it will again go back from 3 it will go back to this line is 3 less than equal to 5 yes it is then again it will go back circular to line number 2 it will again print hello friend 3 it will again be incremented 3 is incre incremented to 3 plus 1 4 then again it will go to this line is 4 less than equal to 5 yes it will again go back to this line number 2 hello friend 4 again it will be incremented it will go to this line number 3 4 is changed to 4 plus 1 5 it will go in here check it here okay is 5 less than equal to 5 yes it is then it will go back here to this line again and try to print it hello friend 5 then 5 is incremented to 6 is 6 less than equal to 5 no it is not then the loops end and it goes out if you see this is how the order of do while it is so this is how it will look in do while loop if you see here also I have done the same way like how I did in the for loop 
it's kind of same what we practice in the board but instead of adding starting it from one i have again started it back from five and then i keep on decre decrementing the value so it will be like hello friend five hello friend four three two one and then once it goes to zero it will come out of this loop and print this line finished so if i run this up so it's the same thing hello friend five hello friend four three two one zero and we end it here if i have added it here like zero then what would have happened let me run this program so if you see even if the it's zero and zero is not greater than or equal to one still this line is getting executed why because it's because of the order in which this do while works so in do whiles what happened as soon as i equals to zero this is the first statement that is executed line number four then line number six and then line number seven so even before we are trying to check the condition we execute this loop so that's why hello friend zero is decrypted zero is changed to minus one and then once we check this condition okay is minus one greater than or equal to one which will be false then it will come out but with do while we have this guarantee that whatever we have executed in this loop or in this block will be executed at least once even if the condition is false now in loops there is two more condition that we need to know about break and continue so let's talk about one example where we can use the break suppose you go into a new, new class so you want to ask everyone their name so you will ask hello what's your name is so someone will say arav then you'll go to the next person you see hello what's your name is she will say suppose jasmine keep on asking your classmate their name so that you can know them unless you see that okay now the teacher has come so you want to break this practice of asking others name and want to go back to your seat if you see that the teacher is coming so in this case you will keep on asking people hello what is your name what is your name and so forward unless you see a teacher how we can write this into a loop so in here i, I will write a basic one so first we will add a scanner class So this is how the skeleton code will look you will go to each person you will print what is your name and then that person will print that their name and you will keep on doing that so suppose your class has 50 students so how we will write it in a for loop what i'll do i know i'll first initialize count of student equals to i'll start with one and I, since i know the count is 50 so what i'll do i'll put a while loop i'll count student less than or equal to 50 this is the condition that i am trying and then i'll close this loop because this this whole statement i want to be executed 50 times and then i'll just give be a little bit more polite and i'll just give them thanks for everyone for sharing their name with me so this is how i change the ex statement to be executed 50 times so now what we were discussing earlier so each one will go ahead and tell their name i'll store it into a keyword also spring name now what i want to do i want to keep on running this statement 50 times unless i see a teacher if i see a teacher then i have to stop this and go back to my seat in this case you want java to keep on executing a loop unless you find some situation in this this loop has to be cut off in middle only so for those cases we use break so break is like just come out of this loop just put a break on whatever you are doing in this loop and just come out of this loop like in, even if the condition is true then also as soon as you see this keyword break just come out of that loop don't execute it for any more scenario so what i want to say that if name equal equals to teacher then i want that this loop should cut off and i should come out by saying thanks like i should no no more ask people their name so this is how I have written the skeleton program before only and we are just uh, adding the scanner class for input uh, put the name then we have just this count student to just uh, we are initializing this after that we are putting this condition where we are saying that because we know that only there are only 50 students we are checking that okay 
is counts within less than 50 that means we have to keep asking people name and this is what we are printing we are asking like what is your name student number one student number two and so forward and whatever name they are putting we are, we are storing in this variable and then we are comparing this name with the teacher like if the name is equal to teacher then break it and come out of the loop else if the name is not equal to teacher it will not go into this block and the student number will keep on incrementing and as soon as it's 50 it will go back here as soon as it's 51 it will go back here it will check okay 51 is not less than equal to 50 it will come out and say thanks so one thing if you notice this here i am using this dot equals to compare teacher to name so why i am not using the simple equal equals to like we do for logical operator so basically this is a string by string what we mean is like whatever is inside like if you remember we talked about character like whatever is inside the single quote that is a character and in the same way whatever we write inside a double quote that is a string like if whatever if this whole thing is a string this whole thing is a string data type because it's inside this double quote so to compare to string object we can't use equal equal to so this is what we are using we are using a function I'll cover more about this later and I'll also post some link in the description but for now you have to uh, just remember that whatever we have in a double quote that belongs to a string data type and two strings could not be compared with the equals to they have to use dot equals a function here. So let's run this up. I'll run it. It's asking what is your name student 1. So I'll put something like what is the name student 2. And this this is how it will keep on going till student number 50. But suppose not the teacher come. Put some. So if you see as soon as the teacher come it goes into this line number 17. And there is a break statement. So what this break statement is telling? Just stop whatever you were doing and come out of this loop. So it will just come out of this while loop and then go on to this thanks statement and then come out of the program. So this is the usage of break. Basically it's saying that just come out of the loop in abrupt only even if the condition is satisfying. Like if you see the student number is here 4 only. So 4 will be less than or equal to 50. But still it does not go on in the loop because we have used the break statement and we are saying just come out of the loop. So this is the use of break statement. So let's go back to the same example. Suppose your teacher asked you to give you the name of all of the people that are present in the class as of today. What you will do? You will go to each seat and ask people their name. Hello, what is your name? He, and then that person will say Arab and you will put a name. Okay, he's student number one. Then you will go to the next person. You, he will say ja, uh, he or she will say Jasmine. You will say, okay, she's student number two. And so forward. You will keep on continuing till you reach 50 because you know there are total 50 students. But you don't know how many people are present today. And that's what you are counting. But if you see a teacher in the middle, you don't want to calculate their number also into the student count because they are not student, right? So what you want to do, as soon as you see the teacher, you will ask their name. They will say that they are a teacher. Then you don't want to increment the student counter. You want to move on to the next student. So you, after you see a teacher, you just want to move to other student and you will ask them their name. You will in increment the student counter to one more. So if you see, even if we add the teacher here, the student counter still remain at three only. Because for the teacher, you don't want them to be considered a student and so you are not incrementing the counter. So how you will solve this? Into Java. You will do this by using continuous statement. Basically what we are saying here is like, we will keep on asking people their name and increasing the counter. And if we see the, see the teacher, we will just ignore the, them and not do anything. And we will move on to the next statement. So this is where continue is used. So we are back in the program. So it's here the while loop. And then I'm asking what is the name. And then what I'm saying, if your name is equal to teacher, I'm using this keyword continue. So what does continue means? Like don't execute whatever I have below that statement. And then just go on to the starting of the loop back again. So here we don't want to break the loop like we don't want to say that if the name is teacher just come out of the loop don't execute anything. What I am saying if its name is equal to teacher don't execute whatever I have written here just go back to the start of the loop and run the statement again. So th this is what is the use of continue basically as soon as you add the continue all the statements after that continue will be not be executed and this compiler will go to the starting of the while loop. To check the condition again and try it so here i have also added this break statement also so what this is doing is like if you get the name as end basically you reach the end of the wall and you know that okay now there's no student in here then you want to break 
because you know all of the students that are present are already being counted out. So that's why I have added as soon as you see end, that means you have reached the end of the class and you can come out and give the total number of students. So let's try this out. It will say student 1, I'll say, let me increase the size, name student 2, then the last what is name 3, I'll say teacher. So it will it will see if you see it's again as the student three only. It's not incrementing the counter here. The count student remain three because we are using continue. So it's not even executing whatever we are writing it here. It goes back to this start of the loop, the while loop, where it's checking okay three is less than fifty. Go and ask the name again. So here if I add like ends, sorry, it should be end. So it's saying okay number of student is 4 because as soon as it sees end it knows that statement is breaking just come out of that if we didn't have it here then it will keep on executing till 50 times that's it for today thank you for joining us in this video do comment your feedbacks and suggestions for how we can improve with the videos please comment in the video if you want me to cover some additional topics also keep coding and we will see you again in next video